Okay, so let me give you a little context of why we're doing what we're doing. Today is December 31st, 2020. I think, like many people, I'll be excited that 2020 is behind us. It has been a crazy year. It's an election year in the US, a lot of political turmoil, a lot of racial tension, uh, and even a global pandemic. So this has been a crazy, crazy year. I think a lot of us are excited that uh, 2021 might bring better things, but uh, we shall see. Regardless, uh, I like to start uh, each year fasting and praying, just get my mind right, seek the Lord, commit my life to Him, ask Him to guide and direct my steps and, and to bless what I put forth my hand to. So I like to do this every year, but I've never done one like this three days out in the wilderness away from my wife and my family. I, I've, I've dated Heidi for I think like three years. We knew each other for four. We've been married for 17. I've never had a New Year's away from her that I can recall. So anyway, she was very gracious to give me permission to uh, get away, but I'm gonna miss her and the family. And uh, anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm excited though. I, something else I should mention is I'm about to turn 40. Woo, the big four zero. And there's something about that number it just it gets your attention. I don't know. For me, it's kind of like halftime, you know? Uh, at best, I, I don't know. Hopefully, I have another half left, Lord willing. But if not, uh, definitely at least half of my life has been spent. And uh, I want to invest my re remaining days wisely. So there's a lot of things from a new year to uh, kind of a second half of my life that I just felt very compelled to get away and uh, seek the Lord. You know, uh, spiritually fasting is a huge part of my journey as a Christian. Uh, in the scriptures, we don't see any particular command of this is how you fast and when you fast this is what you should do. We see examples, but they really vary. In the Old Testament, there's guys like Daniel who gave up, gave up meat and wine and traded it for vegetables and water and they did great. There's a woman named Esther who interceded on behalf of the Jewish people and asked for the entire nation to do a dry fast for three days, no food, no water. And uh, God really honored that. Uh, we see fasting throughout uh, the Old Testament leading right up into Jesus' day. Uh, Jesus began his public ministry with a 40-day fast, no food. How about that? He's the man in every way. Uh, and then his apostles actually carried that tradition on. So uh, they fast and pray, but they were actually challenged why they didn't fast and pray like the Pharisees and even John the Baptist disciples at a point during their, their journey with Jesus. And Jesus basically said, hey, fasting and praying is important. But uh, you know, now's not the time for it. After he did die and then raised from the dead, we do see fasting becoming a regular part of the apostles' life and ministry. But uh, again, sometimes they utilized it to select guys like Matthias to carry on the ministry, and other times they cast lots. So it's kind of unpredictable how fasting looks and when it's going to be done by you know followers of Christ. But but the principles are the essentially the same. It's an opportunity to deny yourself and live for God, uh, a chance to keep the, the flesh in check and, and live by and for the Spirit. And uh, that's exactly what I intend to do and desire uh, for my life to look like. So uh, a dry fast. Now, why would I do a dry fast? I'm going out to the wilderness. I'm going to be far away from everybody and uh, I'll likely have no cell phone service. So why would I go without food and water? Well, one, I've fasted for 48 hours in the past, so no, I can do that. I've never gone three days, so we'll, we'll see what that is like. Two, I've never gone more than really a few hours without water, so I am intimidated by the dry fasting component of it. But um, I don't know, man, I just I feel compelled to give it a try. I have brought water, and uh, I brought 16 ounces of water and a little bit of turkey jerky, so should I need it, I've got it. But uh, I'm hoping and, and praying that I can make it uh, through Saturday at 6 p.m. I'm, I'm about uh, 18 hours into my journey right now, so uh, we'll see. And I'm not too worried about it, you know. It's an opportunity for me to, to honor the Lord with my very best. And it's kind of like a kid, like one of my kids, they come up to me, they, they you know, they, they color, uh, you know, in the coloring book and they present a picture to me. You know, if they don't color in between all the lines, it still means the world to me what they, what they attempted to do for me and, and, and the artwork is beautiful just because of the heart behind it. So I feel the same way about my fast. I don't feel legalistically committed to this dry fast, but I do think it's an opportunity to just, um, yeah, seek the Lord and honor Him and, and uh, we'll see how it goes. One of the benefits of dry fasting, especially for an extended duration like three days, 
is a new immune system at the end. Simply, the, the theory is that your weak, older cells will die off just because of the lack of water and therefore it's a bit of a survival of the fittest in the body and only the strong cells survive. So hopefully I'll come back from this fast, a new man in every way, physically and spiritually. So uh, this vlog will be a uh, kind of a documentary of sorts of my journey, the significant uh, step in my journey, not only because of the New Year's, but as I turn 40. And I'm glad to have you along for the ride, and I hope it inspires you in your journey. On a final note, um, fasting is more than just food and water. It's also an opportunity for me to get away from electronics and just the regular rhythms of my daily life and a lot of distractions and uh, really just be undivided in my devotion to the Lord. So the only thing I'm bringing apart from a tent is uh, a Bible and a journal. So I'm looking real forward to this time and uh, I'll kind of uh, check in with you from, uh, I don't know, from time to time just to let you know how I'm doing and, and again, uh, to record this moment in my life but also hopefully to inspire you in your own journey. So with that, I'll see you in a little bit uh, at Everglades City when we begin our taxi ride to uh, what I'm expecting is gonna be Hog Key. I think that'll be my final destination, but I'm gonna check with the Ranger station today and see if that's what they recommend as well. So uh, we'll see you soon. All right, I just checked in and got my permit for camping for the next two nights here in the Everglades National Park. The adventure begins now. Well, there goes my ride. <laughs> All right, just got dropped off by the captain. It's now 3.45. Took an hour 15 to get here with a little 15 minute break, but uh, there's the captain way back there. So I'm on my own here at Hogs Key. Not a bad place to be though. It's beautiful, definitely peaceful, very remote. I'm gonna set up camp here, try and get out of the sun a little bit. Looks like we got some flat ground right here. I'm gonna check down the beach. I saw another spot that might be good and uh, we'll get this tent set up here before the sun sets. Well, we got camp set up here. The sun's gonna be setting in about 30 minutes behind me. And uh, anyways, I'm expecting a great night tonight. The mosquitoes were pretty bad, so I had to cover up. I had gloves. A little uh, face mask, as you can see, and I got some booties for my feet, but uh, they're not getting through this, which makes me feel a whole lot better. I'm gonna set up a little campfire back here with some uh, dry bush. My tent came out great. It's got a little natural shade and canopy there in case we get some rain. And I uh, can't beat the view here, can you? So one of the things that I looked for when I found this campsite was I wanted something flat and open. Obviously having a nice view is a bonus, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is finding, you know, nice flat terrain where you've got a little bit of shelter from the trees. Uh, one, you know, there's, there's, there's probably some wildlife out here. Uh, this key is connected to the mainland. So, uh, you know, just having a little bit of bush around me just makes me feel a little bit more protected. And then, um, you know, in case uh, it rains or something like that, I've got the rain tarp on, but also just have some natural canopy there. And then in addition to that, uh, the sun, as you can see, is setting right there in, down in the west behind me. And because it's winter time, it's uh, December 31st, it'll probably hug the horizon a little bit. So I'll be interested to see if I get a lot of sun there tomorrow. I'm hoping that uh, these trees here behind me will uh, keep the sun off of me. If it doesn't, I can move and adjust, but that just seemed to be the best place to set up a tent. Uh, my campfire back there, again, is just to keep any wildlife back in the wild and not here at my campsite. 
and uh, I am a little concerned by that large dry fallen tree next to it but uh, anyways whoo I'm itching so I don't know if the noceums got through my net or not but anyways uh, I, I do have an ability to get ocean water pretty quick should a brush fire or anything spread so this will be my home for the next uh, few days I think it's gonna be a great spot All right, so it is now January 1st, 2021. Look at that. It's about uh, 40 minutes until I'm 48 hours into my dry fast. It has been a blooming hot day out here in the Everglades. I can't believe it's winter time. It feels like it's summertime, but it's been a good day. Uh, you can see behind me uh, the beautiful ocean. It's high tide right now. Earlier today, it was low tide. I literally could walk out 100 yards. I've had a pretty good day. I started up uh, getting up around 6, 7 a.m. I had no less than a few hundred no seams all over the net that I was sleeping under. And uh, anyway, some of them were getting through. Those guys are vicious, they're just mean. So they woke me up, I got out, I didn't know what to do, so I made a fire trying to keep them away. Just I, I felt like they wouldn't like the smoke. Sure enough, they didn't like the smoke, so that improved the quality of my life for a few hours. And then uh, at 9 a.m., once I got a little too hot, I didn't want to get dehydrated. So I headed out for a nice swim here in the Gulf of Mexico. It was so refreshing, it felt great. I came back and I set up a hammock. I'll show you that here in just a minute. I stayed there from basically 11 until, or basically 10 to two. And uh, I just read uh, the book of Isaiah, the first 12 chapters. I prayed and uh, kind of was in and out of consciousness the whole time, very relaxing day. Then at two o'clock, the sun dropped down in the sky and my hammock got blazing hot. So I no longer had the shade of the uh, grapevine. So I headed over to my tent. I moved my tent into the shade and I set up a pretty cool canopy in there. I took the net inside of there and I set up, uh, anyways, I rigged up a little something and it was great because I was able to basically take off my clothes with the exception of my briefs, cool down, turn on the fan. And in there I was able to read, journal, uh, pray, just have a great time, clarity of thought. I have been very hungry today and thirsty, but uh, not at the point where I feel like I need to break the fast. I did pee this morning, it was dark yellow. So between that and the incredible humid weather that I've been in today, I'm a little nervous about how long I can make it. I'm not gonna force anything, I'm gonna listen to my body and uh, just take it one hour, uh, one moment at a time. But uh, so far, so good. Again, about, uh, 38 minutes away from 48 hours into this dry fast. Well, um, part of what I did today was I memorized Romans chapter 12. I've been working on it for about a month or so, but today I, I really tried to uh, kind of commit it to memory. So I'm gonna try it from memory. We'll see how this goes. My brain's a little foggy, but uh, I'll do my very best. And uh, this is a mix of NIV ESV. I've been using both my Bibles to memorize it, but I think you'll see I, I, I track on pretty well. So if you have your Bible, Romans chapter 12, here we go. <clears throat> Therefore, I urge you, my brethren, in view of God's mercies, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You may test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will for your life. By the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think more highly of yourself than you ought, but with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has given to you. Uh, just as each member in a body has a different function, in Christ we are bo one body, each members individually one to another. Having gifts that vary according to the grace that God gave us, let us use our gifts. If it's prophecy, then in accordance to our faith, if teaching in the way we teach, if serving in the way we serve, if um, uh, compassion, then compassionately, if uh, with generosity, with uh, giving, then generously, 
F, leadership, then with zeal. F, uh, acts of compassion, then do so cheerfully. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Do not be slothful in zeal, but fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless them and do not curse them. Uh, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Um, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Uh, do not repay evil for evil, but uh, give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of everyone. If possible, so far as it depends upon you, live at peace with everyone. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But to the contrary, if your enemy's hungry, give him something to eat. If he's thirsty, then give him something to drink. And so doing, you'll heat bring coals on their head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Romans chapter 12. All right, so I hope I got it. I don't have any way to uh, check and see if I got it right, so hopefully you were reading along. But uh, that's an incredible passage. It's meant a lot to me it's for so many reasons. Uh, just talking about the importance of really... Uh, dying to self to live for God. That's what I'm doing here. Uh, looking to his word for guidance and then uh, how to live the Christian life, some real practical ways to live the Christian life. So uh, with God's help, I pray I can live in a manner that's worthy of the name. I know I can't do it in my own strength. So uh, that's one of the many reasons why I'm here right now. Okay, well, um, I'm going to go for a brief swim and then I want to show you uh, my campsite. I think you'll uh, like seeing how I kind of set things up. Okay, so I decided before I go for my swim, I wanted to show you my uh, little... All right, so before I go on a swim, I wanted to show you my little setup here. This is my hammock that I rested in today underneath this grapevine. It was so nice when that sun was uh, on the eastern side throughout the morning up until 2 p.m. And then back here, I'll show you my campsite. Uh, these no are so vicious. You know, the mosquitoes can't get through that net, but the no get right through it. So anyways, I made a little net inside of my net you can see and I've kind of rigged it up as best I could that actually is supposed to go over my hammock but uh, I felt like I'd get a better night's sleep in there we'll see I've got a little fan inside of it too so this is where I'll be spending the night and then uh, that's my fire back there it's uh, gone out but uh, it kept me warm last night and this morning not that I need to keep warm it's so humid out here I cannot believe it's winter time have I mentioned that anyways uh, I think I probably will get that fire going tonight just to because uh, the coals are hot and uh, it does just keep the wildlife away. So with that, it is time to go jump in the Gulf of Mexico, cool off for a bit and get ready for what I hope is going to be a restful evening. All right, so here we are at Hogs Key during low tide. You can see the Gulf of Mexico really recedes back, exposing hundreds of yards of shoreline here. And it makes it fun to go walk around and see all the things that are buried just a few feet below high tide. You can see there's all sorts of conks here. Uh, this is just one of probably 50 that I saw this morning. Mussel still inside. You never see that in the Bahamas. They love conch. So all their conch shells are uh, empty. And uh, same thing here, uh, from big to small, they're all there. They stick the little head out and they kind of scoot around. And this one has two little beady eyes that come out the side and an arm. So uh, distinct muscles in these beautiful shells. And I found this beautiful uh, coral of some sort. You can see the purple on it. And I uh, found some red, uh, sand dollars everywhere. And then another uh, muscle of some sort, so might be a clam, I'm not sure. But uh, anyways, they're in abundance out here. So if you like mussels, you can feast on them during low tide. But I went fishing today, didn't catch anything. Had a good time casting my line in there. Earlier this morning, there was literally hundreds of birds diving in for fish. So I thought I'd go join them. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna go, now that the, the morning has started, it's about 10 a.m., the breeze is coming in. So I'm gonna head back to camp and uh, set up my hammock. Well, I'm double masked up. The no are still out. Mosquitoes, not a problem. No terrible. Little beast monsters. So anyways, this helps, uh, you know, buy me some time. 
Anyways, last night I was in there sleeping pretty good. I kept the cover off. There was no rain, so it was nice and cool. I had a little fan going. I had that net over me, so I had a good night's sleep with the exception at 3 a.m. Some raccoons and then rats started crawling around and under my tent. It was awful. So anyways, uh, very light sleep from three to six. At six, I woke up. This time, I probably had hundreds, if not thousands of noceums in my tent trying to get at me. So I got up, got out. Uh, I tried to make a fire this morning, but everything was still wet. So I made one a little bit later. You can see the smolder still coming up in the smoke. And uh, whenever I go by that, for whatever reason, the noceums and mosquitoes leave. And now I'm gonna let the uh, tent air out for the day. So I've left the zipper down and I've set up my little hammock. Uh, I am, I guess, let's see. Wow, all right. So I'm only eight hours away from ending my 72 hour fast. I think I can make it. Uh, one of the keys though has been rest. So I've spent a lot of time just resting and uh, not overwork my body. So this is where I'm gonna be for the next, let's see, it's 10 right now. I'm gonna pick up at three. So I'll be in here for about three and a half hours just chilling, reading, uh, gathering my thoughts. I got this really cool document I'll show you a little bit later where I, I write down, it's just basically my, my life document. It's two pages and it has my goals, missions, affirmations, things like that. So I'll be updating that today and getting ready for 2021. So all that'll take place here in my little cocoon. And uh, you can see here, I didn't have proper rods. So I just grabbed a stick and ran a line across the top. So it worked out, uh, worked out pretty good. Highly recommend these little hammocks. Uh, they are fantastic. I think it's called a, uh, an Eno, E-N-O. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. All right, not too bad of a view from the hammock here. Well, one of the things I've been doing, and I'd recommend you do if you get a chance to get away and have a retreat like this, is just spend time in God's Word. I love the Psalms because David just pours forth his heart to God. In one Psalm, he's praising God. In the next Psalm, he's crying out to God saying, where are you, Lord? Why aren't you answering my prayer? And to be honest, that's the way I feel many days. You know, one of the main reasons I came here was not only to uh, you know, get my mind right, but was to connect with my Heavenly Father and to love Him more, to know Him better, and to serve Him faithfully all my days. And there's a lot of times I'd like to just hear directly from Him, but I gotta be honest, I didn't have any dreams here where I felt like God spoke to me. I didn't hear any audible voices. And uh, as much as I'd like that, uh, what I do have is His Word. And His Word is so clear, it speaks to my heart, it transforms my understanding, and it gives me a new path and a new direction. So the more time I spend in it, the better off I am and the closer I feel to God. And I believe you'll find the same to be true. The second thing that I do is I take some time and I journal. And so you can see, here's my journal. Nothing fancy, Heidi literally grabbed that notebook for me as I'm walking out the door. But it's just a way for me to capture some of my thoughts while I'm here and uh, write out some prayers and really just uh, put some of my thoughts down in writing. And when I reflect back and look back on this, I'm always amazed at the things God was teaching me and the insights that I had and even sometimes humored by some of my frustrations in life. So be sure to keep this. Uh, God's people in the Old Testament often, uh, excuse me, God's people in the Old Testament would often make um, altars. And the reason they did this was because they wanted to remember the Lord's faithfulness. And so in many ways, that is what my journal is to me. You know, one of the incredible things about coming to a place like this is that there's no distractions and you're surrounded by God's beauty. But this isn't where God wants us to live our lives. Uh, I love one of the quotes that Billy Graham said, mountaintops in life are for views and inspiration, but it's in the valley where the fruit is grown. And so these sort of retreats I take once a year just to get away, reflect. Jesus did the same thing before significant ministry. And uh, he, he just get, a, get alone with himself and to, to connect with his heavenly father and just get the insight, encouragement and strength he needed to live his life. And I find the same to be true in these retreats for me. Uh, one of the things I do while I'm on a retreat, and this is the last thing I was gonna show you is my life plan. I update this every New Year's and then I review it once a week and it acts like a compass. It's not a map. It doesn't show me exactly where I'm going and how I'm gonna get there, but it points me in the right direction. And so the first thing that I have on here is my purpose. And then I go through my mission, my gifts that God has given me, 
my personality and my passion. And these are again like a North Star. It reminds me who I am and what I'm uniquely called to. Then I go on to my epitaph, what I want to set about me when I die because it's important to begin with the end in mind. And then I go down to affirmations, just things that are true. It's so easy to believe what other people tell you or that you're just basically what you have, what you do, or what other people say. But life is so much more than that. So these affirmations remind me of that. And then my gratitude here is a practice I've been implementing in 2020. Every day I start with three unique things I'm grateful for. This is a list of just kind of general things I'm grateful for. But I've read so many studies that talk about how gratitude just improves your perspective, your mindset. It actually makes you smarter, like you're more constructive when you have a heart of gratitude. And so these are things that have really helped me in 2020 I wanna continue to do in 2021. Then I go down here to my goals, and I've got goals as a man, as a husband and a father. I can't possibly do all of them, and so I just remind myself, you know, focus on my goals in order of priority. There are seasons of life. Uh, allocate time, stay focused, and trust God and honor Him, and everything will fall into place. So as a man, uh, oh, by the way, I have some pictures here. These are pictures that just remind me as a man, as a husband, as a father, what I'm primarily called to be and so uh, I, I love flying and so this just reminds me of uh, just one of the highlights of my life is being an aviator but anyways uh, you can see I've got a lot of goals as a man this just uh, reminds me uh, of what they are and then it also keeps me on track so some of them are very specific about what I need to do then as a husband I go down here and just remind myself of what I'm called to as a husband and I do the same as a father and it just keeps me on track because I can't review this every day, um, I found this mantra to be helpful. And I quote this every week to myself, I can do it from memory, but basically it says, I am resolved to be a strong and courageous man, husband, and father who rejects passivity and accepts responsibility. As a man, I will love Christ with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. As a husband, I will be faithful, a loving friend and servant leader. As a father, I will be engaged, a loving dad and spiritual leader. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So anyways, that is my mantra. This is my life plan for what it's worth. I hope it helps you. I highly encourage you to make one if you don't have it. And uh, I'll put information down in the comments below um, just so you can uh, have maybe a, a resource to start shaping one for yourself. But this has been an incredible gift to myself to keep me on track and keep pointing me in the right direction. Well, I'm gonna jump out there in the Gulf to cool off one last time. Then I'm gonna pack up my, my campsite here and uh, I'm getting picked up here shortly. It is now uh, 1.45. My ride should be here anytime between 2.45 and 3.15. So my time here is coming to an abrupt end, but a welcome end as I look forward to going home and uh, living my life for the glory of God with my beautiful family in the city he's placed me. Yes, sir. All right, the faithful Captain Craig showed right up. I slowed him up. He was here at 3 o'clock, 2.59 actually. <laughs> and I was caught jumping in the water swimming. But uh, that's Hog Key. Goodbye, Hog Key. You've been good to me, but I'm so glad to be going home. <laughs> I all right, so we headed, back, right. we headed back inland or along the coast? All right, let's go, man. Let's roll. We are like 200 yards or something, or 150 yards away from them. They're flying. They, they usually don't fly that easy. It's beautiful. It is beautiful, though. I mean, we are way far back. Awesome. There's literally a school of dolphin right here behind the boat. Can you believe this? They're having a great time. This is amazing. Unbelievable. So cool. This is God's amazing creation at its finest. I'm going to zoom in so you can see even closer.
There's the captain of this fine vessel. Did a great job. It's good to be back on land. There's my car just where I left it. A good ranger to welcome us home. driving back across the beautiful state of Florida through the Everglades. It's so peaceful and beautiful out here. Uh, man, I was so happy to see Captain Craig. He pulled up right at 3 p.m. I jumped out of the water, dried off. We hopped in his boat. We had a great boat ride back. I was a little nervous. Captain Craig told me when I first met him, he was a friend of a friend, that he had got out of prison seven years ago and was a self-made man and somebody had given him the boat that he was driving. And uh, anyways, I really enjoyed my time with him, but I was just worried about uh, him getting back safely. That boat has definitely seen better days, but uh, hey, it was reliable and it got the job done. He showed up right on time. I had even prepaid him, so <laughs> I was even more nervous. But uh, he came through and uh, we had a great conversation. Turns out uh, he gave his life to Christ while in prison since getting out of prison he said it's been tough but uh, God sustaining him he thought uh, he might have lost his salvation just because he had taken such a bad course in his life I had a chance to just encourage him and tell him that God will finish the work that he's begun in his life it's not based on his works but Christ finished work Philippians 1 6 says that God will finish the work in his life in Psalm 138 verse 8 says that God will fulfill the purpose for his life and his loving kindness never fails so he thanked me a great deal for that it seemed to mean a lot to him I, I was just delighted to share the gospel with the brother in Christ and encourage him in his walk and uh, right after that he spotted a pod of dolphins and they swam alongside the boat for 10 minutes it was incredible it was just like God's favor on the trip so anyways we made it back safely i'm in the car now headed home to see my sweet family and kiss my bride and uh, i've got exactly one hour and four minutes before this drive fast is over and my wife asked me what i wanted for dinner i told her water <laughs> so i'm looking forward to that uh i am I, I tell you just speaking of the fast i feel like the lord's really sustained me through it all I am a little tired and weak right now. I am starting to feel lightheaded, so uh, if I start to ramble on or things don't make sense, uh, I'll blame it on uh, the, the lack of water. But uh, in, in all genuineness, um, I feel pretty good and uh, I'm glad to be going home. I'm glad to be ending this fast, but I'm so glad that I did it. And um, man, to God be the glory. I don't think I could have done it without his strength. But what a wonderful time away. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. I hope you uh, will comment below. Let me know your thoughts. If you have any questions, let me know. I will respond. And uh, in the description, I'll try and post information not only about Hogs Key and the Everglades that I learned about, but I'll also post uh, Captain Craig's information. He's awesome. He knew so much about that area. He was born and raised there, so was his family and his grandparents, so that's his home. There must be a few hundred people that live down there in Everglades City, so he knew everyone and knew everything about the place. Um, I'll also post some of the equipment that I found useful during my time, and then all the stuff that I talked about in terms of uh, a life map and whatnot, I'll post that, and hopefully it'll help you in your own journey. Well, with that, uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe if you haven't. I'm going to post some more incredible content in uh, 2021. I'm super excited about it. You don't want to miss it. It's all going to be about how to live better. So uh, until then, God bless you and keep pressing on. All right. So all right. here's... So I just got back from my, uh, my little getaway. Thank you for letting me get away. I really appreciate it. So three days, no food, no water. Last time I left here, around 179. I just weighed out there, this, but this is the very spot where I weighed. 166.2! Wow! 
All right. Well, I was expecting that light since was like high school. Yeah, I haven't been that light ever. That looks scrawny. Yeah, more wrinkles. <laughs>